Hi, I'm Richard, and in this new series we're going to be working on creating random dungeons in Unity. I don't know what you're thinking. Where's the dungeon then, Richard? Can't you see it? There, in the bottom left. Alright, let's get started. Alright, thanks for tuning in guys. Now, the, the reason for that slightly crazy intro was that I, was, I hope that many of you will not be put off by the fact that the only output from this first part of the series is going to be this little console output here on, on the bottom left hand side. Uh, the reason for that is that quite often, and I, I think this is generally a good practice, is that if you have an idea, you should go through and think it through, perhaps just get some very basic code down, to, to see if what you can uh, what you're thinking about can actually be achieved so what I thought about I had a little think post the maze algorithm one which I was pleased with but not not my proudest day to be honest with you it seemed a little, the, the maze seemed a bit pointless what I thought would be much more fun would be to have dungeons the sort of dungeons that you can roam around uh, potentially you could have a, I don't know, even a space station or a dungeon or I don't know some caves whatever whatever uh, some sort of algorithm you could use to create random caves or procedural caves and I, th I thought about it and I had a little bit of sleep and then I, I went away and I thought you know what would be really good is if we had a very similar setup to the maze algorithm where we have a bunch of rows and columns and each of those rows and each of those cells of the rows and columns it could have one of about 10 possible shapes and those shapes would have to connect to the adjacent cells let me just take you through to, over to Excel to show you what I'm talking about these are the sort of shapes I mean. So in any cell, you could have a horizontal line, a vertical line, a, one of the corners, uh, possibly a T shape facing in certain directions, or indeed a, a crossroads. But the uh, caveat would be that you couldn't just put it there. It would have to have appropriate neighbours. I'm calling them friends, actually. I don't know quite why I went down that road. I, now, thinking about it now, I may even change that to neighbours in a few moments. So on the left-hand side, for instance, of the... Oh, excuse me. Hide that. You shouldn't be seeing that. Not yet. Go away. There we go. Imagine that never happened. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got this horizontal bar here. And you'd imagine that on the left-hand side of that bar, you would be allowed another horizontal line. But you wouldn't be allowed a vertical line because that would mean that it would sort of stop suddenly. So everything has to connect. And another example perhaps would be this little corner here. It could connect to this this corner here and it could connect to that t-shape there but it couldn't connect to this t-shape here because it would, it would create a block so what it does my thinking as I'm thinking this through I'm thinking right well each cell it goes through and it looks to say what possible neighbors am I allowed and then it picks one of those at random and goes through um, it didn't come without its problems but I'm pleased to say that it's actually very very simple to use and produced off the first prototype if you like a very very successful result so let's talk about what, how this how this works. If we get to spin back into Unity, you'll see that there's only one script right now, and I've called it Map Generator, and I kind of wish I'd called it Dungeon Generator, but there you go. Uh, here it is. Let's just double click this and, and take a quick peek at how it works. Now the first thing it does is it initializes the box characters. Now take a deep breath, because it's not as scary as it first looks. You may remember that a moment ago I showed you these characters. Now these are those same characters, but they haven't got any spaces in them. If you're wondering where these characters came from, perhaps I should just bring up the ASCII character map. One second. And of course, by ASCII character uh, map, I mean a UGF <laughs> character map, because these are way beyond that of the of the ASCII character set. We've got these rather convenient looking shapes here. It was as if they knew what I was doing, or at least uh, this makes me think that somebody's done this before. These are all the interconnecting shapes that you saw a few seconds ago. So these are valid characters, and they actually, uh, they're actually they um, actually working in MonoDevelop, which is brilliant as well. I can imagine something like Notepad may struggle. Notepad++, of course, always my favorite, uh, works fine with it, as I'll show you in a second. So we can see, we can visualize this stuff, which is great news. It means we can crack on with trying to create a um, uh, a conceptual idea and, and put it in the console. So what I've done is I've created these. Are, these are the possible characters. Uh, these are the possible ones that, that can sit that can go in the cells. Let's just be clear about that. Uh, but there's a couple of other possible characters as well. O means that it's a free cell, all right, and X means that it's a wall. And the reason I went with the wall on the uh, what I'm going to do, you'll see in a second, is I'm going to create a wall around the outside, and that gives me the ability to say what possible uh, options can go next to a wall. 
Okay, I will, I will, I will, I will of course make this available to, as a Unity package, and you guys can take a look and debug this. It's, it initially sounds a little scary, but it's actually quite straightforward. Because what I've said is, for each of these characters, uh, they can have up friends, down friends, left friends, and right friends. And you can see here that uh, I've created an array of possible values. So just to talk you through here, the zeroth element of means this is the first character here. So this zero here is all of the possible left friends or possible left neighbors that this character can have. Okay, and uh, left one, friends one, is all of the possible left hand side uh, cells that the uh, vertical bar can have. And you can see that for all of them, obviously a free space is absolutely fine because we're probably gonna fill that in a minute. Uh, it can have another uh, horizontal line you can see that it can have a uh, a line that uh, connects to it but points downwards afterwards, a line that connects to it and points upwards afterwards, a T-shape, a T-shape going up, and a, a crossroads. It can't have a wall next to it on the left-hand side, which makes sense because it would be going straight into nothing. Okay, you, you'll see in a minute, this, this, isn't, this doesn't quite pan out. It's almost, the, the algorithm won't be able to cope with all cells being a beautiful beautifully connected but that's okay we can, we can work on that in the second part and so it goes on and you can see that I've done this for the right hand side so again so the zeroth element so this is all the possible right hand side uh, uh, cells that could be put uh, what you call them characters positions whatever that could be put in there all right so again we can have a vertical line we can have one pointing down it looks a bit scary if I quickly show you how I got that back in Excel here what I did was I took all of those char all of the characters these are all of the possible characters, and, and you can see I created a different uh, uh, sheets for each possible one. I, I, here, here are all the characters, and I just deleted the ones that would, weren't valid. You can, <laughs> I don't know if this is the best way to do it, because looking at this here, back in MonoDevelop, you can see this is horrifying. You can't, I can't imagine trying to type that out uh, shorthand in, in an actual developer that in MonoDevelop. So I sort of went through this here. Uh, just looked at all the possibles. It took me an hour or so, maybe maybe half an hour, just to go through the possible entries. Again, you see, uh, what are we looking at here? On the left-hand side, uh, a vertical bar can have a, another vertical bar on the left because they're not connected. That's fine, and so on. And again, again a vertical bar can have uh, a wall, an X value on the left-hand side, again, because it's not going into it. Alrighty? Alrighty, I hope this is making sense. So that's what this does. It sets up all the possible connecting characters on each side for any given cell. Yeah, I'm calling cell. I'm going to use the cell character and cell um, interchangeably. I'm calling them box characters because like I say they are valid actual UTF characters. All right. Now, if what I will show you now, if, we, if once that's been initialized, all tidied up, we initialize the map. The first thing we do with the map is we uh, put X's in the top and bottom rows and the left and right hand columns. It's very simple looking uh, uh, um, very simple couple of for loops that do that and then I put uh, O's or uh, available in all of the other cells I just sort of kind of, if I didn't do that it, it caused a few problems with null pointers and stuff and I, so I just thought I'd do that for uh, for clarity so if I just show you here we go and if I now I spin to the left there's the big reveal that I had a minute ago so this is what it would look like after that you're gonna this is what's this a 12 by 8 I don't know what is that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, 12 by 8 thing, and, and we've got the rows around here, so effectively we've got 10 by 6 on the inside. All right, so that's that's how that's going to look after that point there. And now the fun begins. Now we need to start uh, filling in the cells, and here we go. We do that here, and what we're actually saying is, uh, so we'll start at cell 1. Remember, normally this would, uh, column 1, excuse me, and normally, like I say, no, sorry, start a row one. Thank you. Start start at the top, Richard. Um, before, yes, let's start at the top. I'll talk about that random in a second. So we're starting at the first row, which is here. Because remember, uh, uh, C Sharp, like many languages, is a zero-based uh, language. And so that was zero, zero. But we don't want to start there. We want to start at this point here. One, one. Row one, column one. You can see there. We're going to go all the way from map rows minus one. Again, because we're not going to do the bottom row. And the same with the columns. Start at the first column. And the, which is that one, and go all the way to that one. All right, so it's going to go. So it's going through there. It goes away, and it gets all of the possible valid characters. So let's have a quick look and see how that works. This isn't so complicated. What it actually says is, right, let me look at every possible character 
So it's going to create a string initially, which is going to build to show that all of the valid characters as it finds them. It goes through each of the characters in box characters. That's all these ones. And it says, OK, char ch box characters. So it's going to start with the horizontal bar. It's going to say, OK, let me look at the left hand side of the cell that we're at at the moment. Does that cell, is that cell in the box character's left value? Okay, so is, that, is it in this list here for the horizontal bar? If it is, good, carry on. Is it in the right hand side? Okay, look at the right hand side. Is that character okay? If it is, then good. If the box character's up is okay, happy days. And if the box character's down contains all the uh, required uh, possible characters, then OK, return, then add that as a valid character. And then at the end, return all of the valid characters. Now you'll see this thing here. It's possible, it is possible, that some of the cells may not have a valid character that can go either way. And this, this happens particularly towards the end and the end of the columns. And I'll show you, I'll show you some examples in a moment. Um, so, so what we're saying is this needs to be there as well. In fact, it, what I found was this ran into an infinite loop uh, because because of this problem. I, I did it slightly differently and had to rewrite it to do this. So to say, look, if if you can't if you can't put anything in there, set it to O, which you may remember is the free cell uh, that we're using. So potentially, you know, it, sh it shouldn't block other cells connecting to it. Alrighty, so let's have a look now uh, at the, how, what carries on next. So what it says is then, okay, great. I'm going to go and get the, the valid characters, and then it puts into that column uh, one, any one of the valid, valid characters that will be returned. Okay, random dot range zero comma valid characters dot length. So any, anywhere between the first and uh, last characters that are available. If uh, looks like if only O was there, then it would only put O in the in there because that would only be have only have one possible value. Just a quick talk about this one here. This this uh, the random function which we're going to use for now uh, if you don't put that in there it produces the same map every single time so it needs what's called a seed to uh, to sort of mix it up a bit know how it works computers like a seed all right now and that is it guys and then what I've done at the very very bottom is I created a little where is it where did I put it here we go a little display map um, function that, that will just do that console output that we saw on the screen there on the Unity screen. So let's take a look and see how that how that looks when it comes out. I hope this is making sense. Please comment uh, if you if it's not making sense. I'm more than happy to uh, take the, uh, to explain and take it a little bit further, perhaps some further details. Now, why has that come off? Okay, let's just quickly unclick that. I tell I know why that's come off. It's because I was playing around with actually, and I went actually into the dungeons. We can play with that later on. Here we go. So we've got ourselves. A dungeon down here. Now what I found was this wasn't good enough. Oh and by the way Unity, I found out that you cannot increase the font size. I find that shocking uh, of this console. I, how long has Unity been around? Six, seven years and they haven't got around to being able to edit the font size. Uh, if you've got a 4K screen I, I, can, I wish you the best of luck because I don't understand why why it's something so simple as that they've done so many brilliant things with unity right rant over so what i what i find myself doing if i'll do it now uh, is copying this into notepad let's do that now so just control c and then control v and I've, what i've done in notepad by the way as you can probably tell is i've, I've gone quite large <laughs> you can adjust it with control and middle mouse scrolling in and out and here we are here's our here's our map and you can see this has worked rather well actually it's produced the walls it's connected everything in it's sometimes it's quite hard to tell which characters use where so you might well you might want to use uh, just you, you, to highlight what's where you see and you can see it's on the corners here this is brilliant I don't know if you worked out but the only character that can go in the top left hand corner is that one there's no other character that can go in there because everything else would point into a wall so the only one that can go there is that one Same, I think that's true of all corners and you can see we actually hit a problem on the bottom right there is no character that can go there remember it's going it's going uh, top to bottom and then, then left to right so it's going to get here and there's no character that's going to see if any if I put one of the bottom corner ones in there it would be pointing up into this into a dead end so there's a couple of spots it hasn't been able to do it and we'll work on that in the next uh, tutorial on how to fix that. The other problem, and let me just see if I can make this happen. This doesn't always happen. Okay, I'm going to try a couple of times. It's basically it's a closed loop. I, I 
I got a pretty 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 scary one. A typical as I do this, I am sorry if I don't know if you see, but I'm looking on the bottom left hand side here. Um it's not happening. It's not happening, and you think uh, this is this is the scary stuff sometimes when you're debugging. Perfect. There we go. It has happened here. Here we go. Oh, excuse me. Hello. There we go. Yes, it was that one. Yes, there we go. That's another thing. I notice the console misses around sometimes. Control A, Control V. Can you see this little fella here? It's created a, a closed loop, which is which is uh, which from a logic perspective is absolutely fine. Everything connects there, and it created a bit of a problem here. Uh, but. It, that's actually it's worked, hasn't it? It's it's done as it, it's been told. It's all of its friends have, have connected up correctly, but it's it ultimately ended up in a place that we couldn't get to. Uh, so so I don't know. I've got, I've got two thoughts on that. The one problem I came across. Hang on one second. If I show you this one, okay, I, here's some I prepared earlier. This one here. Look, if we were to start in the top left hand side. The closed loop was created in the top left hand side. I've never seen that before, but it can happen. Look, so you you've got a bit of an issue there as well. So we need to we need to address that. We need to perhaps write a little algorithm that will find closed loops as well. Now this is great, and you're thinking, brilliant, Richard, you've done great. This is this would make a wonderful ASCII game. Um, I keep saying ASCII, a great uh, text-based game. How on earth are we going to put this into Unity? Well, the, my next steps, if you like, the next steps I'm going to make are to uh, go through this, and for each object found, each of these types found create the, uh, an object that re represents that on this map here and then place it onto into the game view all right now that's what we'll do in the next episode so we're going to we're going to tidy up these little closed loops I'm, that's probably too small for you to see so let's go back into here we're going to tidy up these closed loops like these ones we're going to work out how to fix these dead ends and then we'll work on actually getting something into the scene view so it actually looks, starts looking like a game. So I hope this has made sense. I hope this is enjoyable. I hope that you are looking forward to the next episode. If you are, comment, like, subscribe. That's the kind of stuff that keeps me pepped up, that keeps me rolling along. So um, I, I, I probably should be saying this all the time, but thank you so much to everybody that's watching. I am getting subscribers daily, and, and I... I can't. I'm not. I'm. I don't intend to be a YouTube sensation. And the fact that people are subscribing to what I do just fills me with joy. And I am privileged to have you watching my channel. So thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. All the best. Thank you. Bye bye.